you talk to foreigners who comes here, uh, everybody talks about the nature. Uh, of course, when you grow up here and, and, and have been living here for you know, 47 years, uh, I don't see it like foreigners do, but uh, I know we, we, have, we have a great nature uh, and uh, that's, that's the main thing uh, all the tourists want to see. But of course we also have uh, some, some things who are a little bit uh, special, especially for, uh, for foreigners. Uh, and of course football is one of the things that, that uh, do that, that people knows about the Faroe Islands, because we have made some some great results and we beat uh, Austria in uh, in our first match in the uh, FIFA G. So everybody, not everybody, but many people knows about the Faroe Faroe Islands. Around 10% uh, of the Faroese population are uh, active football players on some level. And that's a huge number. And uh, as far as I know, it's, uh, it's a world record. So, of course, it uh, plays uh, uh, an important role for, for the Faroese community because it means that 10% uh, of the Faroese population stays active. And they're also uh, a part of uh, a social community and well organized clubs. So, Together they create some great moments and when our national team plays here uh, in our stadium in Torosa, uh, we are probably around 4,000 people, which is pretty much when we only are 50,000 inhabitants. So we stand here proud of our national teams uh, and supporting them. I think to represent your country, that's the biggest thing you can do as a football player. And to get selected, that's hard work. Um, and it's fun to go out and train with your club team and to keep fit and every training, like I want to do my best. I don't care if the person next to me doesn't do her best, as long as I do my best and show the coach what I can do. On the women's side, there are no, no professional at all. It's only school girls and uh, workers and mothers. They do it because they, they love the football and not because of uh, the money. But of course, some of them have dreams that they will sometimes be good enough to play abroad and, and in a professional club. Uh, I'm sure that some of them have dreams. When we play a match in the qualification, we will meet in a day before. Now it's a friendly. This time we meet Saturday morning, then we have the match uh, Monday evening. I was a national team player myself. You are always uh, looking forward to, to meet up with the girls you don't see all the time, and especially if you are playing in Denmark, as some of our players do. Framvis av bölten någon här, Mjälte, spelar ut i Suina här, och Sleiv Hansen på plats. Vi spelade mot Norge förra sommaren, 
And it was the biggest loss in, in Ferry's history, I think. And we were like humiliated and it was so embarrassing. Um, so we absolutely want to do better. But it's hard. It's hard when, when a lot of players play home and the, the level is, is not as high as in Norway. It was very hard to sit on the bench and see, see the goals just keep coming. They kept going to 90 minutes. It's like, OK, it's 10-0. What can we do now? It's not easy, but you still have to fight until the final whistle. We were not happy to, to lose that much. We knew that we were up against one of the best teams in the world, but we just started uh, our journey. So if we don't uh, want to, uh, to be in this game, we, we're just going to play against uh, ourselves. After the game, uh, it was perceived by many as, as only negative. Uh, and it was very difficult for probably almost everyone to spot anything positive at all uh, with this experience. But I'm proud of the players and they, uh, they fight bravely. And that's probably, uh, they also rise. That's probably the thing that uh, defines them more than anything else. On the other hand, it also uh, tells us uh, what's our starting point. And, uh, if we uh, start from this reality and we are aware of our opportunities and strength, it's probably also something positive that we can take from this match. So. Estonia, we played against them two years ago. They were better in that match. We had a very good team then. If we manage a draw, it will be good. I really hope that we will see more fighting in the team. I know we did fight last match, but it didn't it didn't work. We are again in a level where we build again. We also know that uh, Estonia is not a bad team. They also uh, are progressing and are playing a lot of friendly matches, more than we do. But, uh, hopefully we can get a better result than against Norway. We also want to, to score goals and we also want to, to, uh, to win and, uh, and we're, we're going to go for that in, in this friendly, uh, uh, for sure. Today, the teams in the Faroe Islands, both on the men and the women's side, are good at uh, probably before you know playing a match. They they know what the success term is, um, what or what success means. I think for us back in '95, we had nothing to compare to. The second game we played uh, was against Wales, and this was in the qualification round for the European Championships. You had to take your chances when you got them in the match against Wales. That were you were just lucky, I guess, to resist those 20 shots <laughs> um, towards our own goal and, and score on probably our only chance. I remember I got a pass from the right. I kicked the ball with my left leg, and um, it just went flat. Um, yeah, into the goal. So uh, it was it was a, it was a great moment. That was the first victory uh, for the women's team in a in a qualifying you know, yeah, qualification. I think I was 17 and 18 years old. She helped me quite a lot also when we played in Denmark. Uh, it, it was, it's the best player I played with, a uh, fairies player. So she's very good and uh, she's a great captain. 
I often thought about the fact that I, I think I really replaced football with research. And, and that's why it was so easy to, um, to stop playing. Because I, I didn't stop when I was, you know, playing my worst. I think I stopped when I was still, you know, playing my best. But still, it wasn't, it wasn't hard because there was something else to, to yeah, focus on. Very, very few uh, female players can live from, from football. So very few players have that, you know, dilemma uh, that they need to choose one or the other. If I had been given the opportunity to focus only on football and play professionally, I would have done so. Uh, and then, you know, when I was 29, I would have to start from scratch. Uh, I would probably be in a worse situation. I would definitely encourage um, young girls in the Faroe Islands to move abroad and try to play under more professional circumstances. I think I would also try to talk about, you know, to, to combine it with some sort of, of education so that it is not solely going to be football. It's very typical that uh, the players have a full-time job or they full study full-time. So uh, they don't have the same opportunities uh, uh, to practice high-level football uh, as someone who is professional. So I know that finance is very important, but where we are right now, uh, I think we, we are somewhere else and we have to, to focus on development. I was just a girl from the Faroe Islands. Why should I get paid for, for football? It has been very, very hard to see any opportunities. But then my boss in my kindergarten told me that he believed in me, that he wanted me to, to move to see how far I could come. And he told me that, oh, if you play in Sweden, in Germany, and somewhere else you actually can get paid for, for playing, and I didn't know that. And then I started believing in myself, and I started believing that, okay, maybe, maybe it is an opportunity. When I was younger, I never played football, like, seriously. It was just a fun thing I did, like, on the streets with, with the neighborhood. Like, after school, just go to the playground and play some football there. But then I was selected to the national team. That's when I, I started to, to work towards something bigger. The first time I told my family, I had to convince them that football is my first priority. It's very hard to, to combine education and football, especially because I don't get paid for football, so I have to get money somewhere. I have school from eight to three every day, and then I have practice, so I have like, three hours each day to have a social life. So it's, it's really hard. I feel like 24 hours a day is not enough. <laughs> because it's so like man dominated, Faroese girls need someone to believe that it's, it's a possibility. Someone to believe in, in them to make their dreams come true, to pave the way for, for the rest of the Faroe Islands to follow up. That thought makes it worth it. <laughs> Osla, she, she took the step. She went to Denmark to play football. It's very good that she did that because uh, many girls, like almost everybody except her, they're afraid to do that. If she was here, she would be the best in her team. She wouldn't have to work that hard to come in the team. It's good for the national team that, she, that she's taking that chance. When I played with the boys when I was younger, I had the problem that they didn't pass me the ball because I was a girl. So that was one of the reasons that I also wanted to play with the girls' team because there I got more respect. She was only a little girl when we saw that she was very, very good at football. Because she, I think uh, you could see that she understood it, if you could say, say that. She is very good at playing to the others, I think. So she was actually very young when we saw it. She was playing with the boys. 
<laughs> at that time. I think it's a bit different now because we have become more grown-ups and now they see that I can be as good as them or even better. So the boys that I play with now, they, they play with me. They give me the ball and yeah. <laughs> Now I train morning trainings two times a week, which is Tuesday and Thursday, in an indoor hall here on the island, or I train with Hope on Fridays. Um, but right now I also play volleyball, so I don't have really time to train more football. Julia is uh, from the, the islands who's, who's lying uh, longest to the south. She has been uh, the only female uh, in her village playing football along with the boys and she has two hours sailing to come here for, for practice uh, every time and she really wants this and uh, she has uh, potential to to become a, a a player for the national team for for some years there was actually one time where i almost chose volleyball instead of football because we had a really good volleyball season. But I got on the national team with the football, which was a really big honor for me. So I chose football instead. My parents have always supported me in my sports. It's shown that people who do sports, they are more capable of doing their homework. <laughs> 2018, two years ago, I became the best youngster in the Faroe Islands. It was like an award for the struggle I have with um, sailing two hours to go to training and spend a lot of time on the boat just to go to Torsion and train and play football. About 12 hours to sail back and forth. Now we are in the forest. In the summer, when the weather is really good, you can barbecue over there, and then you can just sit at the benches and eat with your friends or family. I think I also put mine there <laughs> when I was a kid, <laughs> or a baby, or I don't know. We, we are very proud of Julia. I think she's a fighter. And uh, when you think about um, all the time she uses to travel in, to tour some, to train and to play matches and so on. Uh, yeah. Julia Noame, I hope she will keep on playing because she also can read the game. Um, and we need players for that. I hope that uh, the players that play now, they will play for longer. They quit playing football when they're 20, 21. They more see it like, uh, oh, I don't want to train so much because I have school, I have work. But they don't see what they get. If you play in, in a football team, you get so many friends, you get so many experience, you travel the world, um, you get friendship that lasts like a lifetime. I 
after training, we went to Heimatblitne. Two people made us a fairies menu, and then we got pancakes for dessert. We ate fairies food and bread, and just were together and talked about other stuff than football. football. Yeah, <laughs> just to get our mind off of the game all the time. There's not gonna be anyone because of the coronavirus. My family would not come and they're doing the same in Denmark. Um, there was a Superliga game today. Um, there was no one watching. We have a presentation for, for the players, everything related to, to the game, what, what our plan is uh, on every detail. Four hours before the match starts. Saman, snakkju saman, ok? Alla vegin frá mannmanni, verja, mýja og alopp, hjálp mig hvernig örum, individuelt, inn að gera þetta allra besta, ok? Man, gerir, man kann ekki gera mér eins og þetta allra besta. Men viss alla hugsa fyrst um sig sjálfan, að, að, að gera þetta besta og svo allan að þegar, svo hugsa mann um hínu. Men alla er í, í flokk, ok? Er við samdúð þegar? Já. Er við pjóða samdúð þegar? Já! Ok? Ósk Ja. Det ska se jag Oslo täckta sista där uppe. Är det klart? Är vi klara? Ja! Vad är det? Vad är det nån? Backa kanske var hjälp. Det gett upp den sinte chele touch solar då. Ja. Ja, annars bara boa vei. Oj så. Vi det försöka. Ja. Vi brukar kroppen. Det är måste. On the other side, I think. <laughs> the crowd wants to see the lineup.
It feels almost like a victory. <laughs> Julia played well, very well, especially the first 30 minutes in the first half. You see some of the other players, we changed her after 60 minutes. Also, she did very good, she's very good on the ball. We were 1 0 behind, so we needed something. Something extra, and uh, then we can prepare on, on the wing. Also, have a plane to catch in you know, one hour time, so she's a little bit in a hurry. It was only you from the, from the media who saw the match, and uh, of course, it's a little bit strange, very, very special to, to, uh, to experience. It was perfect. We were satisfied with the results and with the, with the work, the hard work. And I think we managed to stick together for 90 minutes, and that's, that was our goal, so perfect. <laughs> I know it's like it's the end of the the football career here, you know, but uh, it's a nice, uh, nice end to it. So. Football means a lot for almost everybody in the Faroe Islands. The islands are not so big, only 50,000 people live here. I don't know the exact number, but in percentages, <laughs> when you're growing up with football, you're gonna be old with football also. 